Well, if you've been here before, you know I like editing photos to make them look kind of moody and I like enhancing the mood, but sometimes when you're trying to do those sort of things to a photo, uh, it's kind of easy to go too far, either too much color or too much detail, wrong distribution of light, things like that. So I've got a photo today that I took in Iceland and I've been working through this photo for a while now, trying to get it just right. And honestly, it's quite simple to really enhance the mood without overdoing it. That's what we're gonna do in this video. Let's go ahead and get started. Here's the, uh, the photo. It's a nice little spot, it has some nice rocks, kind of a leading line from the left to kind of curve around to this little house, uh, the mountain, the reflection, and that sort of thing. Nice clouds, all that kind of stuff. And of course, I wanna enhance the mood. I wanna make it you know, a little bit more dramatic, but not over the top and not you know, super, uh, super saturated. I do like my colors, and I think sometimes when you think of a really dramatic or moody shot, you might think it uh, would be excessively colorful. Not really the, uh, the, the look that I'm going for here, but I wanna walk through my workflow to give you some ideas of what you can do. Now, I'm actually gonna start with this camera landscape camera profile. So if you take a look at the before and after, it's already had a fairly interesting effect on the overall photo, so I'm pretty happy with that. Now, the first thing I notice is that the photo is a little bit too bright, and that is because it's a little bit longer exposure. You can tell how smooth the water is, and uh, you know I want to pull that uh, exposure down a little. Or excuse, well, yeah, pull the exposure down uh, because it was a longer exposure, so it got a little bit bright on me. But uh, no, no hot pixels or anything like that, as you can see here uh, in the uh, in the histogram. I'm going to pull the highlights down. One thing that you'll notice and that we are going to fix in this photo is that, as is often the case with any kind of landscape photo, the foreground is going to be darker and the sky, which is going to be the source of light, is of course going to be brighter. We're going to work on that here and uh, make some adjustments and some targeted ones to help me kind of control the overall look of the photo. Now I'm going to pull down the blacks slightly because one thing I want to do here is of course amp up the contrast but I also want to adjust this color or temperature. And for me, I prefer to just, when I have a specific value in mind, uh, you know, if you, you're like, oh, 5300, in this case, I'm 5377, which to be clear, I got to from experimenting and just dragging it. But if you ever know that you want to be 5500, cool it off or whatever, you can just type it in. The, the tint is going to stay the same. The vibrance is going to come up like a five or six, you know, something about like that. Just a little bit, I don't need to do anything excessive, maybe a little bit of sharpening, you know, 18, 20, something like that. And so with the camera profile, the different adjustments that I've made and the temperature change, we've already got a significantly altered photo, which is great and going in the right direction, but of course, there's plenty more I wanna do. So before and current state, that's looking pretty good. Now the next thing I wanna do is get into super contrast. And this one, I say this in every video, and that is really just that I move these sliders around until I get the photo kind of looking the way I want the photo to look, which is, of course, uh, what my editing is all about, especially when I'm enhancing mood and uh, things like I'm doing in this video because I'm trying to create a certain look to the photo. And uh, the moody look, uh, you know, you pick up moody conditions, like this is kind of a moody conditions already, simply because you get those nice clouds and you got a kind of a dramatic uh, scene, but um, I'm going to enhance and amp that mood up. Super contrast, tool number two for me, pretty much all the time. Develop raw, super contrast, that is my workflow. Uh, first two steps, 99.9% .9 of the time. So before and after. And you can see if you look at the before and after overall, we've already recovered a whole lot in that sky. We've got a whole lot more drama going. Now before I go any further, I can see several spots in the sky. They're driving me crazy. They might be driving you crazy. Let me take those out and then we'll jump back into the edit. Okay, I think I got them all. There was also like a little stick here in the water. I pulled that out. So again, you know, before and after came a significantly long way. I'm excited about this edit and I'm having fun. And what, uh, what I want to do now is, of course, adjust that sky. For me, that's a linear gradient 99% of the time. And I know there's sky AI. Uh, I don't want to get into all the reasons here, but the main reason is that I like this gradient, which allows you to fade the effect into the photo and therefore just kind of disperse the intensity over a greater area. Whereas if you use the sky uh, AI masking, it'll just pick up the sky and it doesn't allow you to, there's no gradient, it doesn't fade, right? So that's why um, it's a linear gradient for me because it's just a, uh, in many cases, not all, but in many cases, it's a superior way to adjust the sky, uh, in my opinion. That's not saying that the other uh, the auto masking is as bad or whatever. It's it's totally fine. It just because it doesn't have a gradient, it doesn't really work for me in a lot of cases. 
that works really well and I like how I can fade it because I want the darker clouds. I'm kind of framing the photo and you can already see there's already darker clouds reflected here. Shows up better in the water because of the, I guess the depth of the water and all that. It, it just picks up a darker reflection. But anyway, I have dropped it by two stops, a negative two. So pretty significant difference. And I also want to cool it off and I'm going to do like a negative 22, 23, something like that. Just darkening it and cooling it off partly uh, well, I need to darken it, of course, because it needs to be darker, but I want to cool it off because I want it to more accurately match what's going on in the water. So if you look at the before and the after, pretty significant change in the, uh, in the sky. I'm pretty happy with that. Now, in creating kind of a dramatic and moody photo, a tool that I really like to use is Structure AI. And you've seen me many times come in and take sky and water. Uh, that is, if you've been here before. If you haven't, hey, thanks for showing up. I appreciate it. Uh, but if you've been here before and seen my uh, Luminar videos, you know I like to use Structure AI and go negative and paint that into the sky and water. But this is already a long exposure. Both of those are already pretty smooth. Not going to do it, uh, but I am going to get a mask and I'm going to get a brush mask and I'm going to paint in uh, some positive structure. And I want to paint it into just a few areas. I want to accentuate some of these rocks here. Uh, these kind of start leading the eye, I think, into the rest of the photo. I feel like my eye kind of starts there and kind of comes over this way and then kind of runs over here and runs off the page. And so that's kind of what I'm doing with Structure AI is just accentuating kind of the line that uh, my eye follows through the photo. And that's kind of enhancing the viewer experience. And that's how I look at it. So that's why I do it. I also just like the look. Uh, but before... And after, I think that looks really nice. And while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and copy that mask. So if I show you the mask, there it is, a brush mask, which, by the way, every time I use a brush mask, uh, softness 100. That just gets that smooth edge, that gradient edge. Same thing I was doing in the sky with the linear gradient, but that's a gradient edge. The soft of 100 is as soft as it gets, which means it's that smoother transition. So that's why the mask looks like that around the edges where it's kind of softer here instead of just an abrupt fall off. So that's why I do that um, and that's why I prefer softness. So I'm going to click copy to make sure I have a copy of that mask. And what I'm going to do is go get one of my favorite tools, which is Accent AI, and I'm going to paste that mask in. So paste. And if I show you, there it is. I just copied the exact same mask. However, I want to add to it. So I like that mask and where I put structure and that's where I wanted structure to be. But for Accent AI, which I'm about to use, I want to add a little bit to it. So you can copy and paste masks and then go get other tools and add to them. In this case, I'm going to get the brush and I'm going to write bracket key to make it a little bit bigger. And all I'm going to do is just paint a little bit over here because I want some of that to pop as well. And then I come over here and I do about a 30 or so here on Accent AI just in those areas. And yes, those greens and yellows are getting a little bit neon, a little bit electric, a little bit radioactive, whatever you want to call it. We're going to fix that. Don't worry. But the before and the after, it creates a little bit more contrast, a little bit more color pop, a little bit more pop and light. It just brings that area to life. And what I'm trying to do in creating a kind of a moody and dramatic photo is you don't want the entire thing. And that's a key tip, I think, is that if the entire photo is really like in your face, it gets overwhelming for the viewer. Um, and I think it kind of wears our eyes out. And also I think it gets distracting to look at because you don't really know where to focus. So I'm uh, I'm doing these kind of things, Structure AI and Accent AI just in certain areas. Okay, now that I've done that, I want to go into a little bit of a color thing here. And that's with toning. I'm going to go into the highlights and the saturation I'm going to use about a 33 but I don't want that hue, which is in the red. I like to drag it over here to about a 228 or 230. So something like that, 228. And that just puts a little bit of blue into it. As you can see here, this hue slider is color coded, so you can know. But for me, high 220s to 230, that's blue. And I do that a lot uh, in the highlights. And so if you look at the before and the after, I don't need to mask this tool because I want it to go on all the highlights. But a lot of what's getting hit, of course, is the sky. So before and after. Okay, and while we're working on color, I mentioned that some of those colors are getting a little intense, and that's where the color tool comes in. And um, saturation vibrance, sometimes I use those, but not a ton. In this video, I'm actually going to use a little bit of a decrease in saturation over here, like a negative 10 overall, because I don't want a massively colorful photo. 
and I want to enhance, uh, I don't want to overdo it. That's kind of what this video is about, is enhancing the mood and the drama, but not overcooking it. Uh, and I'm going to start with the hue, and I want to make some shifts here. The first one is the yellow, which is really all that grass. I'm going to drag that to the right to about a 30. And all that does is make it a bit more green. And you can see that happening there. And the green, I'm going to take to uh, the right uh, about a 20. And that's also going to make it a bit more intense, uh, richer green. Intense is kind of the wrong word, but closer to blue. So already those colors are there where they look a little bit, uh, they don't look natural to me, even though that's really the color that's kind of come up without me making significant color adjustments. I did Accent AI, which does impact it. But it was a little too yellow for me. And I'm going to go more green, a little calmer, a little more subtle, because this is a, uh, a dramatic photo, but I don't want the colors to be overdone. So I'm doing that with hue. And then I'm going to go into saturation. Uh, and I'm going to take the saturation of those colors down, about a negative 25 for both of those. And that's going to reduce that intensity a little bit. And about a negative 30 for blue, because there's a little too much blue saturation in this image. And I think that looks a little bit better. And then while I'm at it, I'm going to pop into luminance. And one thing I want to do is take the luminance of that yellow up. So 6, 8, 10, maybe something like that, just making that area a little bit brighter. So that's picking up those uh, colors here in the grasses that we kind of shifted a bit from yellow-orange more toward green. I, I took the saturation down, but I'm going to brighten them uh, because they were a little bit too dark. Uh, but with the blue, I'm actually going to go the opposite way. I'm going to make it a little bit darker. So... That's what I love about HSL. It has so much power to come in with these individual color channels and just uh, adjust them. Um, and you can mask this if you want to, but in this case, I'm just adjusting these uh, colors across the entire photo. So there, there it is before, quite a bit more saturated. And to be fair, I love that look. I really do. I just like a lot of intense color, but it's a little too much um, and it's not completely natural. So now with these adjustments, I've toned that down a little bit. You've got a nice pop of green surrounded by a lot of other muted colors. And that's really what this color work has been all about. So I think we're getting there. There's a couple more tools I wanna to use just to wrap this up. The first one is mystical. And this is not gonna be something that I'm gonna mask. I'm just gonna drag that uh, to about a 40 and I do about a 35 on shadows just to lighten that a little bit. But that's impacting the overall look. You can see the before and the after. It creates a little bit higher contrast, which means the darker areas get darker, the brighter areas get brighter. So if you look at the sky, it gets a little bit brighter, except for where the dark clouds are, where they get a little bit darker. So it's enhancing that mood and a little bit of the difference between those uh, brighter and darker areas. That's the contrast that I'm talking about. So I like mystical quite a bit. And then really the final touch is just a vignette. And I just like vignettes. They really help focus the viewer's eye, which I think is nice. And I'm going to do a tiny bit of inner light, like a 10 or 12. Uh, but my subject, I'm not going to choose the house itself. I'm actually going to go a little bit lower into the left of that house. The rest of that area is really still going to be kind of in the center of the vignette. But this is going to help darken more of that edge. And I don't want to put it up here on the house because that brightens up too much of this area up here. So that's why I chose the subject kind of lower and to the left of the house. But if you look at the before and the after vignette, I think that looks really good. And now, if you look at the entire photo, if you look at what we've done to this image, really come a long way. I mean, really bright, obviously spots, so disregard those, but really bright, lacking contrast, lacking color pop, and that sort of thing. But now we've got a really moody and dramatic photo that I don't think looks overdone. It's fairly vibrant. It still has some nice blue and some nice green in it, even though I actually took the saturation down for all those colors but I still think it has some really nice color in it without being overdone. And so that's really the key here is just be careful with the tools that you use, be targeted and specific. Don't hesitate to control the color specifically with HSL and use masking to, to do that targeted kind of stuff like Structure AI and Accent AI, where it's able to target those just in these key areas to create a little bit of intensity just in certain areas instead of across the entire photo. I think that's a key tip. Uh, and that's really it, my friends, before and after before and after, that's a few tips for enhancing drama, but keeping it realistic without overdoing it and making a dramatic photo at the end that honestly, I'm, I'm proud of this photo. I think it looks quite nice. And uh, I hope it gave you some ideas about how to edit your own photos. Thanks for watching. I'll be back soon with another video. And until next time, my friends, you guys take care and adios.